Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to tell you about the structure of enamel. The basic fundamental and structural unit of enamel is enamel rod. It was first described as enamel prism. So, it is also known as enamel prism. The diameter of enamel rod is about 4 to 8 microns. Its height is about 9 microns and its length is variable. The enamel rod extends from DEJ to surface. So, we can say that the length of enamel rod is greater than the thickness of enamel since its course is wavy from DEJ to the surface. The enamel rods are composed of hydroxyapatite crystals as I have discussed in my earlier video. Let's now go to the orientation of enamel rods that is their arrangement in the enamel in longitudinal and the transverse sections. Let's start with the longitudinal section. The enamel rods are arranged parallel to each other from DEJ to surface. They follow a wavy course from DEJ to surface. So, they are parallel to each other and they follow a wavy course. The angle the enamel rods make at surface depends on their cervico occlusal position. So, for example, at the cervical margin, the rods bend apically in permanent teeth while they will be more horizontal in a primary tooth. On the lateral surface, that is on the buccal or on the lingual or on the mesial or on the distal surfaces, the rods make an angle of about 60 degree with the surface. Around the cusp tips and incisal edges, the angle is about 90 degrees. Around the periphery of occlusal fissures, the angle of rods is about 20 degrees. So, it is least around the periphery of occlusal fissures. And at the base of fissures, the rods make an angle of about 90 degrees. Let's now see the arrangement of rods in transverse section. The arrangement of rods in transverse section, that is in the horizontal plane, is more complex than in the longitudinal section. At any depth cervico occlusally, that is from the cervical margin to the incisal edge or from the cervical margin to the cusp tip, the rods within a 10 to 13 prism block will follow a parallel sinusoidal path. All the enamel rods would be parallel and they would follow a certain sinusoidal path. But the block neighboring to it, that is above or below, would follow a slightly deviated or a slightly changed sinusoidal path. So the path of the enamel rods in these particular blocks would vary. So, let's take a transverse section of a tooth at any depth cervical occlusally. The rods here would appear to follow a particular sinusoidal course from DEJ to the surface as you can see in this diagram. Now, when we take another section from adjacent to the one that we have already taken, we will see that the rods follow a different sinusoidal path from DEJ to surface. So, when you superimpose these two sections, the enamel rods in these two groups of sections would appear crisscrossing from DEJ towards surface, except the outer one fifth where all the rods are parallel to each other. So, because of this variation in orientation of rods, when we take a longitudinal section, alternating light and dark bands are seen. When we take a longitudinal section, one plane of rods would be cut more longitudinally, whereas the another plane of rods would be cut more transversely, right? So, the group of rods that are transversely cut are called diazone and the group of rods that are longitudinally cut are called parazone. The alternating light and dark bands appearance is described as Hunter and Schrager bands. The Hunter Schrager bands are seen in longitudinal ground sections only and this feature may be seen in both reflected as well as transmitted lights. The angle between parazone and diazone is less than 40 degrees and as I have already explained, the variation in orientation is seen in the inner 4 fifth and all the rods are parallel in the outer 1 fifth. So, the hunter sugar bands are also seen in the inner four-fifth of the enamel thickness. Now, next, let's go to the gnarled enamel. 
Nald enamel is seen beneath the cusp tips and incisal edges. Here, the enamel rods show a less ordered arrangement. They appear crisscrossing each other, and this crisscrossing is very extensive more extensive than what we have seen on the lateral surfaces. So what is the significance of this decusation of enamel rods or this, or, or this crisscrossing of enamel rods which is seen in gnarled enamel or on the lateral surfaces? The decusation or the crisscrossing increases crack resistance of enamel. So it would make enamel more resistant to crack propagation. Let's now go to the rod and interrod relationship. There are Three different types of patterns type 1, type 2, and type 3. In human enamel, all three patterns are seen. The type 3 is the most common, and type 2 is the rarest. Type 1 and type 3 have a similar gross arrangement, but in pattern 3, the interprismatic material of one row constitutes the tail of the prisms in the row above. So here you can see the typical keyhole pattern. Whereas in the type 1, you will not be able to see that keyhole pattern. Though the interprismatic enamel is there, but it does not form the tail of any enamel rod. The type 1 is the slowest formed and it is found at the DEJ and surface. Type 3 is the fastest formed and it is found in the middle two thirds of the thickness of enamel that is in the bulk of the tissue. The type 3 enamel rods have a keyhole shape as I have already explained with a head and a tail. Here tail of the enamel rod in the row above is seen between the heads of the enamel rods and the boundary between head and tail is abrupt as you can appreciate in this diagram. This is due to the variation in the orientation of hydroxyapatite crystals in the enamel rods. The crystals in the head region have an angle of 0 degree in the center of the head and it increases to 45 degrees at the periphery of the head. This angle gradually increases to 60 degrees in the tail periphery. So at the border of head and tail of two different rods, now this gradual increase of angulation from 0 to 45 and from 45 to 60 is in the hydroxyapatite crystals of the single rod but at the border of head and tail the angle of hydroxyapatite crystal abruptly changes from 45 degrees to 60 degrees and that is the reason why we see a discernible border between a tail and a head of two different rods. So that's all for now. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I'll see you soon again uh, with another video on the remaining structures of enamel. Thank you.